Okay, let's kick things off with a daily overview. So, day one, weather so far, Welsh, Welsh weather. I've got my rain jacket on. Uh, I'm heading the 10 miles to the start in Chepstow Castle. Uh, the weather today, aside from the rain, it's supposed to be a headwind all day because we're going along the south coast. So it's going to be about 350k of headwind, give or take. <laughs> Not to have to carry your bike all the way down to it. Um, so yeah, just be yeah. sensible, be safe. Um, have fun. Uh, we're going to start you off uh, in groups. Fine. The first five will be uh, will be off. Thanks. Bye. Thank you. So let me fill you in a little bit of backstory before we start this whole this whole race around Wales. Um, basically, it's self-supported. It's 1,000 kilometers, give or take. You are supposed to plan your own route. You've got to visit certain checkpoints and waypoints along the way and take uh, time and location stamped photos of these. So if you follow me on Instagram during this, you'll probably see me posting these pictures and wondering what the heck I'm doing. Um, but yeah. So I split this into three stages or three days. First day being all along the south coast second day being well virtually all the way up uh the west coast and then the third day well yeah the north coast riding my home roads is great but i know them like a back of my hand so although it can be good in a sense that i know maybe a little shortcut i also know just how grippy they can be if we have a headwind and if it's pouring in rain <laughs> Needless to say, I'm super excited to be at the event and to give it a go. I'm being conservative for my first time, booked into hotels, um, making sure I get food along the way and not just making do. Although, or maybe I won't be saying that in like, like two days time. Or in video terms, 25 minutes time. Oh. oh, what is this? We just ticked off the first checkpoint. I wanted to wait to get the camera out until we got to there because it's uh, it's always a bit hectic the first hour. Just coming through the centre of Newport now at 9, 9 a.m., which isn't ideal, but it is what it is to get down this south coast. So uh, it's quite lucky I know the south coast quite well. There's a couple of little shortcuts. This is one. I mean, when I say shortcuts, I mean, they literally cut off like a kilometer. So it ain't that big in the grand scheme of things. But I'm hoping there's gonna be a couple of points today where I'm gonna be able to exploit my local knowledge. <laughs> You can never, you can never say I don't show you like the real depths, the real reality. Absolutely stinks. This is the industrial part of Cardiff, the landfill site. So this is the back way into Cardiff Bay through the BBC studios. I was just about to pop out now on the cycle path. Ready for our next stop, Penarth Pier, for our timestamp for. First climb dispatched. Um, it's a tough one as well. 12% <laughs> odd, it's pretty steep. Out of, uh, out of Cardiff Bay into Penarth. I'm really gonna enjoy the next couple of hours because I know the roads well and I know how, uh, I don't know, just nice motor race, nice, Nice people around and, you know, we'll be in civilization for a while. And uh, I know tomorrow is gonna be a long day of countryside. So I'm just trying to soak it all in. It's really nice. There's Penarth Pier there just behind me. Just managed to get my, uh, my waypoint photo on the move. And I double checked just to make sure I did. Look at all these boats out there. 
Hopefully you can see. <laughs> it's not me making them up yet, honestly. I'm not delirious yet. Through one of the small little villages in uh, South Wales, Transwick Major. Just heading down one of these little lanes. I have no idea what to expect on here. But part of having this bike and the 35 mil Gravel King tires is that potentially I'm able to take these little routes that I may have questioned if I was on just standard road tires. I mean, who am I kidding? I'd do it anyway, but <laughs> just gives me that little bit more confidence. So yeah, Cafe Velo. The guys were stood outside. Um, there's a couple of cyclists there actually. I don't think they're part of the event, but yeah, it's uh, it's good so far. Sun's coming out, it's getting warm. Might have to apply some sun cream. A couple of hours now, I'll be on my home roads. Welcome to beautiful Ogmo by Sea, the estuary. Um, apparently, there's a castle around here, Ogmo Castle. That's the next waypoint. Um, so far, so good. Not much to report, really. I'm, I'm constantly trying to not pick up the camera a lot because I realize there's a long way to go. Um, so. I hope you're enjoying the video so far because I'm certainly enjoying the ride so far. So I've not been keeping up to date with where everybody else is. I did actually ride out with uh, a couple of mates uh, for the first, I don't know, 30 minutes or so. We were sent off in the first wave. There's about 25 riders here actually in this event, guys. I mean, considering it's a brand new event and you know, it takes a fair stretch to travel to Wales, wherever you've come from. I know there's people coming from all over Europe to do this. Uh, so thank you everybody from a fellow Welshman. But I've just seen uh, a couple of people, the first people I've seen in ages. And they're going, they've just come from like this road here. So they've obviously got a different way to me. Like they've come on like a, a bigger main road, I imagine, like the A48, which goes directly from Cardiff to uh to here which is like south of bridge end hmm i wonder maybe that's where my local knowledge has come in so about 110k in and uh anthony's just messaged me he's watching my dot he says looking good things starting to settle the second on the road at the moment so the people i just saw must be third on the road maybe I think the guy out front, he did the Badlands Ultra Endurance event, so yeah, all right, like. Well, I made it to Swansea, and in my opinion, this is the hardest part. Well, up to here and on the Gower, just because I know the roads, it's tough mentally when you're heading towards home. So I've made my way out of the urban, urban area of Swansea, my home county now. And uh, there's a couple of options to get to the next waypoint, which is Rosilli. And that's to go dead straight, which is what a lot of people I've seen on their maps have been doing. Downside is you have Kevin Bryn, which is the biggest climb on the Gower to get over. And with the block headwind that we have today, that's not very good. So what I'm planning on doing is hitting the South Coast Road. Still have the headwind on one of the climbs. And then I'll come back on the North Road, whereas most people will be coming back over the same way. And on the North Road, I know I'll pick up a nice tailwind because it's out and back on this peninsula. We often have a time trial out here on the Gower. Really hilly time trial. But uh, it was nice in Swansea, actually. I stopped in Square Peg, little cafe that uh, serves Clifton Coffee, who also support me, and uh, bumped into a local cyclist, young cyclist that I know, known for years. So we had a nice chat for five minutes. And I think that's what I need to do, really, on this trip. I mean, you know, we're 140k now, give or take, and I want to, I want to have, you know, the fun aspect of this. I want to, yes, I want to, you know, like cover as much ground as possible and push myself and 
have that mental tug of war, you know, hopefully not all the time, but I want to experience that. And But I also don't want to get so kind of lost and caught up in it. And I want to have, I want to be able to stop for five minutes for a nice coffee, you know, and just have a stretch and, you know, watch the world go by. Because, you know, I think it's very easy to, to lose that in something like this. I tell you what, that's something we've learned already that we can take away is that just five minutes off the bike can make a world of difference. Like I've been riding for five and a half hours, stopped for five minutes, had a coffee, and now I'm pressing on again. I tell you another thing though, is caffeine, like that's my first cup of coffee for over 24 hours. Like I didn't have a coffee this morning. So, this one's gonna like really, I can feel it kicking in actually. <laughs> but this should take me virtually all the way to Pembroke Dock, you know, another seven hours or so. So I'll, uh, I'll suck the life out of this bit of caffeine, that's for sure. So you can now see why I picked this South Goa Road. Look at the high hedges. I feel so bad because it feels like I'm cheating because I know all the roads. I'm not really, am I? I'm not really. Oh, there we go. That is the old, uh, I think the old Coast Guard, lifeguard, probably Coast Guard. The old Coast Guard's hut, I think that was. And uh, ticked that off and Rosilia is beautiful today. It's a stunning view from here nearly all the time. Lush, as we say in Wales. Absolutely lush. So the road to Rosilli, which is this road, is an out and back road, so there's no other way to get to Rosilli. I passed uh, the champ in first place, and I, I started my, uh, my stopwatch uh, when he passed me on the other side of the road. And when I got to that point, I checked it. It was about 20 minutes. 20 minutes ahead of me and uh, when I was coming back then out of uh, out of Rosilli there was a there was a couple of riders and they were about the same behind me so 20 minutes so 40 minutes between first and well third and fourth really in the space of like six and a bit hours of riding I think it might be some big gaps in this one so this, this must be one of the very few places where we double back on ourselves on the route and everyone has to, there's no other way. Um, and like the fact that we cheer each other on, like when we're going, like coming the other side of the road, like up, 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 keep it going. And sharing like a funny comment, like, you know, we've had 200k of headwind. <laughs> this is great. This is great. So that's my first, petrol station stop of the trip it was literally a hit and run ice cold water filled up my bottles add in some Sturka carb powder for some electrolytes and carbs and I grabbed two chocolate bars as well two boosts because I uh, I was craving a little bit of sugar there and I've been on some quite simple plain oat bars for the last six seven hours so nice to switch it up we interrupt this broadcast of ed's vlog to give you a weather update and i'm in a stunking town in a minute which is bad news bad news because we're about to cross this estuary in a second and head in the complete opposite direction for the next 140k and as you can see across the estuary well actually you can't you can't see across the estuary that's that's also bad news what that means is there's a huge rain cloud over there and anthony standing in for derek brockway today has just messaged me and said that he's taking shelter somewhere and it is absolutely lamping it down so in this tailwind i'm going to chuck my rain jacket on i've had some food because I think the next 30k at least. Yeah, it doesn't look good over there. 
uh, is going to be in this sort of torrential rain cloud. Hopefully it's not as bad as it seems. Well, apart from Anthony, I've just seen my first couple of dot watchers. Thank you guys for coming out in Kamarden. I'm now in Kamarden in rush hour, so yeah. I mean, could be worse. I'm about to get on a really busy main road. Yeah. All right, we're headed to St. Clair's. We've got 102 kilometers to go, 13, 1300 meters of climbing left to do. Doesn't sound like a lot, does it? So uh, I'm looking forward to getting this last bit done now. I need to get on the back of one of these. Okay, I'm off the horrible road and we're heading down into Larne, the Dylan Thomas Boat House, and uh, then on to Pendine. So, Pendine, uh, the sands, the flats, the beach, uh, is the home of, I think, some multiple land speed records. Anthony did tell me that there is a spa in Larne, so hopefully it hasn't closed yet and maybe I can catch them for some snacks. Pretty magical around here, isn't it? You can see how uh, Dylan Thomas got his uh, inspiration for writing, looking out on this view every day. Incredible. Uh, me and Charlie have been here before, so it kind of helps that I know where it is. <laughs> nice one, Ants. The uh, convenience store was open. Depart in Lawn with a Cornish pasty stuffed up my jersey and uh, an ice cold can of coke which is down the back of my neck. Doing two jobs really, cooling me off and I'll drink it very very soon. I tell you what, I'm going through the middle of Pendine with the smell of fish and chips, like that's the only thing with the coastal route. It's like every town you come to has like a smell of fish and chips. I'm gonna have to do it one day, and I. There it is, there's, there's the coastline. And now we take the right turn up probably one of the hardest climbs on the route. And this is Pendine Hill. I'll tell you one thing I am getting a bit tired of this headwind. Coming up to 300k nearly. And, uh,. Uh, yeah, I don't need to tell you that it's starting to play games with me and uh, I just know as soon as I get like the Pembroke Dock and the last 16, 20k will be in a tailwind when we come back from uh, the furthest point in Pembroke so just gotta keep the morale up nearly there I wonder if anybody else knows about the shortcut. Wise man's bridge cycle path. I feel like I'm doing a cracking job for wheels tourism here. It's on this foot. Cracking. Super high class spa hotel right here called uh, St. Brides. I don't think any of us are staying here tonight, but.
There's the classic shot of Tembi. Hey! Man, he's going well. He's going real well. Uh, so, well, he must be about... I got 30k left to do. But he must be... at least 15k ahead of me. Um, and he's enjoying the nice tailwind back to Pembroke. Because we're on the Pembroke... Pembroke Peninsula now. Sun's going down. And uh, I'm just about to hit my last waypoint for today. But for the body is fighting back. Um, my neck, my back, not even my low back, just my back in general, particularly the left side. Uh, and my legs, obviously. But yeah, I, I don't know whether it's general fatigue or actual uh, niggles of injury, which is obviously what we don't want. Well, the final waypoint of the day has been acquired and uh, it was right down on the seafront, had to like basically descend to sea level and anyway, I took a photo because I just wanted to get in and out and uh, it was absolutely amazing down there as the sun is going down, it's like 10 to 9 hopefully I can get to the hotel for about 9.20 maybe 9.30 I'll have a quick shower and uh, get my stuff ready for the morning and then I'll uh, take a take a quick walk to the supermarket and get even a meal at McDonald's or something <laughs> living the life living the life it's worth showing you this this is uh, Pembroke Castle right here surprised there is no way point you actually but uh, there it is in all its glory. I've been here as well. Oh wow, that's nice. You don't see that every day. Okay, we made it. 9.31, so pretty much, uh, pretty much bang on time, if I'm honest. A um, little bit of a walk to get food well maybe 10 minutes or so which uh, which isn't bad is it really um and uh yeah i'm probably gonna try and get to bed in well i don't know half 10 11. um i don't know how much footage i've got from today to be honest but um it's probably best that like tomorrow i just crack on um and just try and like plod rather than like try and push it um today there was no choice really with a headwind um so tomorrow i think i'll i'll just like pace myself and and take it from there wakey wakey <laughs> good morning everyone Borida. look at the sky behind me I'm actually heading that way now in about half an hour time i'm just about to drop into st david's for checkpoint two today it's nine minutes past five in the morning <laughs> and uh, I've been along the coast. I did the first checkpoint, St. Mary's Head, I think it was. It was a really cool lighthouse there, but I couldn't show you because it was just obviously completely dark, apart from the lighthouse, obviously. Um, I'm making a, an effort today now to probably eat well, more solid food, like sandwiches, Pringles, crisp, you know, whatever, like stuff that's quote-unquote normal food. Um, me, I just don't feel like eating bars. I've got bars with me and I've had two, but it doesn't feel like one of those days. So, anyway, gonna head to the RLNI Lifeboat House, get the snap there and then 
Let's get back heading this way. Morning cows! I'm actually really enjoying the ride so far, but I know it's a massive day today. Massive, massive day. So I gotta pace myself today and go easy on myself. Okay. I love how they find like the most like literally the remotest part not well maybe not remotest but literally the end of land as we know it <sighs> some incredible scenes so now that the sun's come up we need a weather check it's not going to be any rain forecast today which i'm looking forward to however that does mean it might be quite warm uh, mid to high teens forecast and the wind well i've just turned and i'm heading in this direction now for the next 100k so unlike yesterday i've now got potentially 100k of tailwind or cross tailwind at least and uh that's gonna like really boost morale to be honest it's been a dead slow first four hours or three and a half hours uh, I've barely scraped 21k an hour um, as I'm sure most people are realizing Pembrokeshire which is where we are now and Kerrydigion which is where I'm headed these regions are probably I don't know if anybody's gonna hate me for saying this the hilliest in Wales also like the slowest type of roads because like if you're heading into the lanes like the, the the climbs are like really slow because they're so steep but the descents are even slower almost because they're so narrow just like these roads and at least like this early in the morning you know chances are you're not going to meet anything but you know as the day goes on thankfully i'm heading onto a main road for the next 100k almost so i should be uh, quite comfortable so to give you a bit of an update on what happened last night I did successfully get probably about two and a half hours of sleep I was a little bit shaky on my feet um, it was just as well because I'm not walking today I got kicked it up I checked the trackers and I could see that some people had obviously cracked on the guy out in first place maintained well and extended his lead but I was passed by four or five uh, and they, they kind of stopped I think but in different places um, second and third being like a fair stretch away as well I'd say first place at this moment is well untouchable frankly um, is in Aberystwyth and I'm miles away from there so I'm basically the equivalent of the time I spent sleeping but of course we're all here for different reasons and I don't know his strategy he might not have even slept so fair play but uh, I've caught and passed two people this morning who were who were stationary so who knows um, I don't think the front three are catchable uh, but I'm currently fourth on the road I think the thing is though that you know like I said everybody's strategy is different which is quite interesting about watching the dots both as a viewer I suppose and me during the event um, I didn't think I'd watch it much but I am tending to watch it and it's kind of egging me on a little bit as well because I know that Today I'm having a massive day, like this is like the longest ride I've ever done is about 510k and that was from South Wales to North Wales and back and that was in like 21 hours moving time Today I'm doing like 450k and I aim to do it in about 18 hours which is doable but I can't really hang around, I've got to spend as much of my time as possible just sort of 
ticking over and it doesn't really matter if I'm like doing 10k an hour or doing 30k an hour as long as I'm moving um, but I will stop obviously as I get further into the day I'm bound to stop so hence the bag which is uh, really helping me out quite a bit because it doesn't even feel like it's there but got some sandwiches and uh, some cookies so all is well Alright, we seem to be getting somewhere now. We're just coming through the outskirts of Cardigan. They make good jumpers, yeah? Direction. Aberystwyth. Which is still a fair way away. I'm starting to see Carmarthen on the road signs. My home county. I did actually assume, because I know these roads, that it wasn't that far, but it obviously is, which means sort of the the route the other side of Aberystwyth is not as long as first appeared uh, my left knee is twinging I don't really know how to describe it but I've just been messaging Charlie well, of course as a physiotherapist uh, she reckons riding without it clipped in for a while might help so I'm not clipped in now my foot's just resting on the pedal I don't want to injure myself and then spend like a month before Alpe d'Huez and the Haute Route not being able to train Difficult decision. It's sort of come on all of a sudden as well. Like, obviously, I'm fatigued and tired, but th that's different. That's like an ache, but it's uh, it's an actual sort of pain now on the front of my knee. So, you know, something that really inspired me and motivated me to 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 try this is seeing. The impossible route stuff that Tyler and uh, Jeremiah have been doing on YouTube and obviously this is not the same standard in terms of video but in terms of uh, embracing the suck as they say you try in something I mean at the end of the day you've got to try it potentially you've got to fail to learn what can be improved and how you deal with things you find out a lot about yourself um, when you're embracing the suck and you wouldn't put yourself or well, you wouldn't learn from the situation yeah, I wouldn't be in this position now if I didn't jump in and try try this well, this is a rather somber moment. Um, I've just had a couple of messages back and forth with Charlie. Bless her, she's trying to like fix me on the move, but um, <laughs> uh, and just like that, it's all over. So the video ends prematurely, unfortunately. But I know what you're thinking. It's like over 30 minutes long already, so I'm glad there isn't any more footage. <laughs> so that there's quite like a there's quite a sad moment there at the end where I'm sort of stood at the crossroads and do I go left down to New Key and pick up the next checkpoint and try and keep going, um, or do I turn right and the signpost says Kamarthen, which you know basically takes me uh, direction home and. I'm already talking to Charlie and she's trying to like, you know, keep me going or at least trying to sort of 
fix what's happening on the road while I'm stood there at the side of the road. But unfortunately, I made um, I made the call and decided to not continue. Um, and it actually turned out to be the right call because even though there's no more footage from after this point, um, I rode like the 30k to Kamarthin and it was very, very slow. And eventually, like, I was, yeah, like walking speed. Um, however, I've taken two days off now and I haven't ridden my bike, but there's, there's no symptoms. So we're fairly certain that I'm going to be okay. So thankfully, like no like damage was done from riding another three or 500 kilometers. Um, but I did receive a message. And I want to read you this message because I think it's pretty important to not celebrate the fact that I didn't finish, but at least sort of, well, let me just, let me just read you this. Okay. So I know somebody who's going to be doing a sportive. It's going to be a fairly long sportive, 200 kilometers. You know, and that's long for a lot of people um, with a lot of elevation. And this is, this is what they said. So been pretty apprehensive about it. It's a big deal for me for many reasons, but just wanted to say that your recent experience on the Wales 1000 kilometer has actually helped clear the fog of doubt in my mind. I have realized it's not reaching the finish line that is the greatest challenge. It's turning up at the start. What happens after that is what happens. Valuable lesson learned, so thank you. And that's it. I just wanted to end on that. We are going to make sure that we recover properly. We're going to make sure that we err on the side of caution and that nothing like bad happens from now on for the next couple of weeks. And we're going to head to the Alps at the end of June. So that's going to be it for this one. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much to the organization and the event and everybody who took part. Hats off to you. So that's going to be it for this one. I'll see you very soon.